Hello, this is News Mongolia on MNB World. I am Jude Rambold. And uh, for our top stories. In 2023, Mongolia sourced 78% of its electricity needs domestically. Mongolia marks the 35th anniversary of diplomatic relations with the European Union. The Consulate of Mongolia officially opened in Karachi, Pakistan. For other news, stay tuned. Last year, Mongolia's electricity consumption amounted to 11 billion kilowatt hours. Of this total, 78% was supplied domestically, while the remaining 22% was imported. Additionally, 279 business units with a mandate for power conservation managed to save 19 million kilowatt hours of electricity resulting in a reduction of 31,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions. The Energy Regulatory Commission of Mongolia submits an annual report to all licensees as per the energy law. Today's event saw participation from over 250 individuals representing 177 special license holders. In 2023, Mongolia's electricity consumption was expected to reach 11 billion kilowatt hours, marking a 6.1% increase from the previous year. Of this total, 78% will be sourced domestically, with the remaining 22% imported. When considering domestic production alone, there has been a 4.6% increase. For domestic consumption, 91% is derived from coal-fired power plants, while renewable energy sources contribute 9%. During the peak winter period of 2023 to 2024, demand reaches 1,636 megawatts, and stations operate at maximum capacity without spare equipment. Additionally, we managed the winter period while facing 70 to 80 megawatt production restrictions, given the potential for further restrictions Due to the growing energy consumption next winter, our industry is proactively implementing relevant measures. The new revival policy encompasses tax and defines policies related to expanding new energy sources, power transmission lines, and distribution networks. Currently, the Amazon Thermal Power Plant has undergone expansion, contributing to providing thermal energy to a specific number of consumers. Additionally, a 50 megawatt expansion has been completed at the Darnot Power Plant, set to commence operations soon. Once operational, the Darnot Power Plant will fully meet the energy needs of the eastern region and supply a portion of the central energy system. In the coming period, the Burljut Power Plant with the capacity of 300 megawatt will be commissioned with the initial 150 megawatt capacity scheduled for this year. The timely commissioning of the Burljut Power Plant is crucial to avoiding potential energy shortages, particularly during peak demand periods like the we faced last winter. In 2023, our energy sector customers and others saved 19 million kilowatt hours of energy annually, leading to a reduction of 31,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions. During the same period, the government of Mongolia updated the threshold for committed consumers, increasing them from 149 to 279 committed users. These users encompass large-scale buildings, energy-intensive industries, and mining organizations, all of which are targeted for energy consumption reduction measures. We have taken proactive steps to implement energy auditor recommendations and adopt effective energy saving techniques and measures in these institutions. Moreover, starting from November 2023, we initiated and executed an awareness campaign among citizens to promote this responsible use of energy. On May 11, 2024, Sukhbatar Square in Mongolia radiated with Europe's vibrant colors and cultural diversity as it hosted Europe Day celebrations. This year's event marks the 35th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Mongolia and the European Union. It was a grand affair, drawing in the crowds eager to experience Europe's rich heritage and charm. 
70 booths adorn the square, each showcasing various facets of European culture, from historic landmarks to modern innovations. Visitors had the opportunity to explore Europe's unique heritage, delve into its diverse cultures and learn about tourism and educational opportunities within the continent. Additionally, the boots provided valuable visa information for those looking to travel to Europe. Uh, basically, what, what we would like to introduce to Mongolian audience is the study opportunities in our country, Latvia because our, our high schools, universities and technical schools are providing uh, lots of opportunities for foreign students in various fields, including medical, medical studies, engineering, social studies. And I think this is a good opportunity for a Mongolian uh, aspiring students, youth, to take opportunity and study in a European Union country. And, and, and to get, uh, get uh, to widen their perspectives and, and, and grow in professional, professional terms in their lives. So that's, that's, that's the basic what we would like to offer to Mongolian youth, Mongolian audience. And tourism of course, yeah, and tourism of course, because Latvia has lots of things to offer. For Mongolia we are, we are uh, located next to the sea, so it's, it's a nice, especially in the summer, you can come enjoy beach, nature, uh, pristine, pristine nature, and, and, and taste local, local foods, local cuisine. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice small country, and, and from, I think from, from East, East Asian perspective, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty unique opportunity. Well, Europe Day for us Europeans is uh, a great day of commemoration. This is when the foundations for the European Union, as we know it today, has been, have been laid. Uh, back in 1950, that's when it started. Next year, we will celebrate 75 years of the European Union. And uh, it's for us a reason to rejoice. This is when the continent overcame war. Uh, our peoples, our countries, our nations got together, decided to lay war aside for good and go ahead in building a joint future. So this is the founding idea of the European Union, which I believe is a wonderful thing and a wonderful success. We're very happy that we're here in Mongolia and that we can engage with our Mongolian friends in that sense. It's about uh, building societies, building free societies, building prosperity and building peace. I think this is a universal message that Europe stands for, but that is as applicable to Mongolia as to anyone else. The festivities were further enhanced by live music and cultural performances as musicians and artists took the stage to showcase the richness of Europe's artistic heritage. So uh, today in the French pavilion we're celebrating the cooperation we have specifically with NEMA, the uh, civil security agency. Uh, you see trucks, you see equipment, training here. Uh, we're also celebrating and showcasing uh, the Olympic Games, which will start in about 40 days from now, so it will come very soon. Uh, there's some of it here and also at the Alliance Francaise, our culture and language centre. Um, so that is the two big things we want to showcase here. But also it's, a, it's Europe Day, so it's a day when we celebrate uh, achievements as Europeans and, and many embassies and many cultural centres uh, from EU countries are here and, and showcasing what they do in terms of cooperation, industrial cooperation, uh, scientific, school, education, etc. Uh, this year is 35 years of uh, diplomatic relationship between the EU and Mongolia. It's also 20 years of enlargement to many countries that have, like Mongolia, a shared history under socialism, sometimes in the Soviet Union. Uh, and I think it, it's uh, interesting to see how both Mongolia and these countries have progressed uh, on a democratic path uh, to development, to partnerships, and that is also something that I believe we want to, uh, to show today. And this is my second uh, Europe Day, and I am very happy to be here. Every time there's a Europe Day in UB, we normally come here and spend a long period of time to meet members of the most relevant ministries and civil society in Mongolia. I think uh, we have very deep ties between our two countries. There's people studying Spanish in the university and also uh, we 
had an exhibition uh, regarding science just some months ago. Uh, normally we travel to Mongolia quite a bit, we try to meet uh, the people, know the country, and now this year in Europe Day, this is a very good opportunity to show the people of uh, Ulaanbaatar what we have to offer in terms of education, tourism, and also the, our gastronomy and uh, our food. Europe Day at Sokhbatu Square was a celebration of European culture and a testament to the 35-year-long relations between Mongolia and the European Union, which is marked this year. As attendees immerse themselves in the festivities, they celebrated the spirit of friendship and cooperation that defines the relationship between the two regions. Now please uh, take a look at current affairs of Mongolia. The Honorary Consulate of Mongolia was officially inaugurated this month in Karachi, Pakistan. Nadim Khalid, a Pakistani national, has been appointed the Honorary Consul of Mongolia. He is a prominent entrepreneur who leads a major pharmaceutical industry in the country. Honorary Consul Nadim Khalid is actively advancing trade, economic relations and cooperation between the two nations while promoting Mongolian national culture and art in Pakistan. Muhtushuk, Minister Consular at the Embassy of Mongolia to the People's Republic of China, participated in the consulate's opening ceremony. Mongolia and Pakistan established diplomatic relations on March 1, 1962, with Mongolia's embassy in China assuming joint responsibility. Batrat, non-resident ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary of Mongolia to the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, presented his credentials to the country's president in February of this year. Now please uh, take a look at currency exchange rates uh, provided by the Mongol Bank. Now please have uh, foreign news partnered with international news agencies. UK's uh, Foreign Secretary David Cameron on Sunday said Britain would not, at this stage, be following the US and withholding arms to Israel. Cameron said he had been pressed a few weeks ago to declare an immediate arms embargo, but uh, that Iran had then launched a massive attack on Israel. Well, I think America and the UK are in a totally different situation. The United States is a massive bulk state supplier of weapons uh, to Israel, including, you know, thousand pound bombs and all the rest of it. The UK provides less than 1% uh, of Israel's weapons and is not a state supplier. We have a licensing system and those licenses can be closed if it's judged there's a serious risk uh, of a serious uh, in, international in speech, human uh, rights. Uh, Cameron also said a hostage deal was the right answer to try and stop the fighting in Gaza and that an arms embargo would strengthen Hamas and make a hostage deal less likely. He said Hamas had been offered a deal to stop the fighting to let aid into Gaza but were not taking it. Asked about Ukraine in the light of reports that Russia was making advances in trying to break through Ukraine's defenses in the northern eastern Kharkiv region, Cameron said we all need to do more and that the UK was leading once again in delivering tanks, anti-tank weapons and long-range artillery to Ukraine. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a great day ahead.